YouTube. So it's been a year since we did the first laser video. We've our had... only our only official laser video is like whoops. Yeah, because we're horrible people like that. And we've been working on other projects and busy and like having doing, jobs. Doing more projects that don't get recorded than don't find it on YouTube than projects that we take the time to film in. But mm -hmm. we decided we need to recap what we've done with laser in the last year. Things we've learned, and maybe launch a teaser about some videos to come with the laser. We have a rotary chuck we want to do a video about, and mm -hmm. maybe borrow a friend's rotary chuck on their laser and compare the two. And then uh, we added a camera up here that basically maps the bed. It's through Lightburn, which is the software that we use for our laser cutter. And then uh, talk about maybe some of the business parts of the laser Business. that we, <laughs> well, we've been trying to get our products yeah. into different stores, and you can make stuff, but what do you do after you make it? Yeah, where do you find people that are going to give you money for your stuff? That's what I want to know. But and anyway. value your time almost as much as you do. <laughs> yeah, right. So, Ooh. what have we, let's talk about what we've broken, what have we had to fix, and what have we done with the lasers? After we got it, we bought some more lenses. I think we we're on our first lens still after a year. Mm -hmm. It's getting a little grubby, but it still works. So. Pretty good at cleaning it. Uh, as far as mirrors, I bought a bunch of mirrors, and we're still on our first set of mirrors. So, mm -hmm. unless you're doing something wrong, if you keep your area clean and and we do aren't stuff. really great about. I mean, it's we clean cleaned, now. We cleaned it twice, right? We've cleaned it like twice officially. and we got probably between 50 and 100 hours of use, which is a huge margin, but we're not really keeping track. And we can maybe go through the Rita screen and see how many times the light bulb has been on in the back, the laser tube. Mm -hmm. uh, we need we to clean the laser yet. tube off. It's, it's dusty kind of back heavy. there. It's because... hard to get back there because we have a ton of junk in front of it. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Our workspaces. The big table set up with other stuff on there. Uh, stuff we've done. Do you want to grab that? mug, show them what we've done with the rotary chuck, just give them an idea. So in the rotary axis, we'll talk about how we set files so that we can rotary act stuff almost seamlessly all the way around around objects. And then we'll do another video with the camera talking about how you can take some abnormally shaped object, throw it in there haphazardly, take the camera and be able to use the computer to see where it is laying in regards to the bed, and it doesn't even have to be lined up square or flat. It can be kind of thrown in there haphazardly, and as long as you use the camera to position it once it's been mapped. So, those are videos to come. We won't cover that in this video. If you're thinking about buying a laser, what's We get in? a lot of people asking us, how much did you pay for the laser? What did you have to do to get it? Where'd you get it from? Which Alibaba store did you order it from? Things like that. So, so in regards... I don't know if we want to give away all of our secrets. We bought it through Alibaba, as I think we posted in the first video. As far as which Alibaba store, I don't remember the name. For like <laughs> three months prior to agreeing to buy one, we were looking at all these different vendors, and I basically created a punch list of what I wanted. I wanted this size power, which is the size of your laser tube. I wanted a Reci W6, or Reci W6. 150 watt, which gives you about 130 watt of usable. Uh, I knew I wanted a particular cutting bed. And that kept bigger growing. Bigger and better. And it kept growing. <laughs> it so kept getting bigger and bigger. We ended up with a 1600 millimeter by 1000 millimeter cutting area. Uh, purchasing the laser was about 4600 bucks. Uh, we thought that was basically going to be it. That was supposed to be shipping included. And when I had asked the seller about, does this include tariffs or import custom fees? Or other shipping fees, they act like, oh yeah, that's all the money you pay is 4600 bucks. When they got to the California coast, there was about a $500 bill for, uh, what do they call it? It was through EUC, it was a company, but it was through uh, 
they basically port fees for them unloading it from a boat, sticking it on, a, I think a train, I think it went from a train to a semi truck to our port of entry here in Minneapolis, St. Paul. So once it was here, then we were told, yep, now you have to pay customs duty fees, which was between 1500 and 1800 bucks all said and done. We tried looking into figuring out how to do them ourselves. And the direction we basically got is you can go to the airport, basically sit there all day. Maybe some nice little old lady will take you under her wing and walk you through the process. Otherwise, you can just hire someone to do it. So we just hired someone to do it. So all said and done, we had about $7,000 to get the laser here. If I did my math right. That's what we tell everybody, at least. Uh, reliability of the laser has been good. Like we said, no issues. Yeah. Uh, it's nice we... having a mechanic on hand. We're able to cut quarter inch plywood at about 15 millimeters a second at about 65% power, which at 65% power we're right around that 30 or 20, 30 milliamp range, which is how you make your laser actually do the 8,000 hours before the bulb burns out. Uh, Some people were asking about the depths that you can cut through. So when you do multiple passes, you can cut through much thicker material, but you, it looks kind of charred. It, it and, chars and yeah. it doesn't cut well. So Quarter single inch, pass. Single pass is, can you do half inch single pass? No. Okay. Quarter inch single pass is a very nice job. Mm -hmm. We did a three quarter inch very thick, nice. like pine board at one point. We had to do about seven passes at fifteen. Uh, millimeters a second. So I think we were doing 60% power when we did that, but it was just not fun. You're doing multiple passes, even doing a second pass typically is fine, but if you have smaller, intricate stuff that the laser is kind of going over twice fast, it just burns it to smithereens. It kind of chars it, and then you get embers kind of almost glowing. You know, with the air assist, it puts those out, but if you're going over the same spot over and over again too quickly and lingering too long, you can start fire. So it's important. We got a fire extinguisher. We had have to stay vigilant when it's running. We very, very rarely just start it up and walk away because that's a recipe for disaster. So she might. But. We don't cut acrylic. So on every laser page that I'm a part of, people are starting fires constantly, and it's always I acrylic. I burned my house down. Running my so I'm a little scared to cut anything, any acrylic, because everybody seems to be burning their house down. But not everybody, of course. But let's see, what have we broken on it so far? People think I'm buying this laser from China. I'm gonna get it, and everything's gonna break within the first year. You know what we've broken so far? Refine it. For uh, the auto height sensor, the sensor right here, there is this little itty bitty tiny. Bolt. We stripped it out. That was me being too heavy-handed on it on the clamp. This so is right good, now we're manually focused. This is a dollar part at Menards. Just get a longer bolt. There's still threads in there. Mm -hmm. Boom, you're done. And you know, I haven't like I was kind of scared about manual focusing because I don't know. You get kind of spoiled. You click focus yeah. and you like walk yeah. away for thirty so, seconds and boom, it's all ready to go. Now that I'm manually focusing everything, it's kind of like now nah, maybe we don't even need to fix it. I don't know. Because that thing hangs down and it snags on stuff, you know. It so. is annoying how far down the sensor has to hang so that it can trip with mm -hmm. the laser head hitting. And, uh, so having it out of the way some, is really uh, nice. The user interface on the laser is awesome. The rotary check so far has been phenomenal, no problems. Here's that camera that we talked about. The plexiglass on our particular laser has got some cracks from us leaning on it and it's all dusty right now. Mm -hmm. But uh, put a little bit of... Uh, Super glue, crazy glue in there, and they're good enough. If we don't clean it spontaneously, those holes get plugged up with soot and dust. We actually drilled easier. those holes out we and made them this... like three times bigger than they used to be. Yep. Because it would get plugged pretty quickly, and then the whole room would fill with smoke, and it was pretty awful. Yeah. So that's just a mess to prevent big chunks from going into the laser and... Plugging it up. The the fan. The fan, correct. She'll put a caption there. The fan, <laughs> the laser. Uh, we've not done much with the slat bed. We're spoiled with the honeycomb bed, mm -hmm. which is holding up very nice. Here's something with nice, lots of little pieces we've cut out recently. Mm -hmm. 
So as far as like, how are, what are, are we going to make any money with this thing? Yes. Someday. Eventually. Someday we will make money with this. Leon is selling mugs and things with like the rotary. So that's his domain and he's excellent at it. He's selling mugs to a local store that puts the local sports team on the mugs and personalizes Baseball them. Baseball sport teams. Yep. Yeah. Um, I'm branching out to selling files on Etsy and also some physical products as well. And then this last weekend, we just got into a store in Stillwater, Minnesota, selling uh, all, all sorts of fun stuff. You know, I like to say that we're like the Chinese restaurant kind of thing where you've got like a, <laughs> a, recipe, a big menu full of all these different things, you know, and a lot of say crafty shops are more, we specialize in this one thing. What I've been designing is, uh, I took inspiration from a different design online, but you follow the directions and you can make like mm -hmm. a rubber band gun. The cat. That actually fires rubber bands. So I... a different version that we made that you pull the trigger and the back part slides up. This one's not put together, it's just held together with rubber bands. Figure we have a $7,000 business vendor. What is our ROI, return on investment? So in this first year of using it, between selling stuff to friends, selling stuff online, and everything else, we've made less than $1,000, which isn't great. But that's probably less than $1,000 after buying all of our materials we've done. That's $1,000 profit. And we've also made a lot of stuff and just given it away. And we're having fun. We're learning more. It we make the best coloring pages ever for any kid that comes to our house. Coloring pages? Yeah. They're like my geometric animals. And then they just color. Gotcha. Kids yeah. apparently like coloring stuff more than paper. Oh, yeah. They stuff. definitely do. They're like, this is what we're not allowed to do. And we're allowed to do it here. Wood! Yep. Natasha is not quite as comfortable using the laser as I am. I do the designing and the breaking. She come find me and says, "I think something is broken on the laser now." And typically, it's... to be fair, I always ask you before I touch stuff because I don't want to break anything. Oh, and you know the little thing that broke? That was not me. I asked you for help, and you broke it. <laughs> What else? That was a peace offering. <laughs>